Hey guys, welcome back to some more FTL episode 2. Um, in this episode I won't be explaining as many mechanics, uh, because I assume that you've watched episode 1. Anyways, to get started, uh, we will not be ever doing the Kestrel, because the Kestrel is actually way overdone in, in a lot of runs, like the Type Bs. I find them both to be kind of mediocre ships, so I, I, I have really no interest in showing you them. Uh, so, I'm just letting you know that. Um, we are doing actually a stealth cruiser today, and it's actually one of my favorite ships. Uh, so, just to go on about what the Type B is all about, um, I'm not doing the Type B today. Uh, actually, I won't do it ever, because it's actually very much luck-based, because um, both of the, uh, the stealth cruisers have no shields. So there's really no... Uh, so you want to go mostly and evade stuff, right? Here's the problem. This one doesn't have much evade. This one has like two points in evade. It's, it's absolute garbage. Um, and also it has, but it does have like the most powerful weapon in the game. It's called the Glaive Beam. And Glaive Beam does three damage per room hit. It's like a beam weapon, kind of like in my USS Railfuck, uh, <laughs> ship. But the problem with this is, um, it has a 25 second charge time. And if, and it requires all four of these weapon slots. So imagine how pissed I get when it, they hit my, uh, hit my weapons bay, because I do not have shields to defend myself. It is, in my opinion, probably the, the hardest ship and probably one of the worst because it's, it's yeah, it's completely based upon luck. You gotta hope that you don't get hit by anybody. Uh, and it's just, you get hit by everybody. So, you know, I made it all the way to end with this guy, but it was a very lucky run. So I do not think I'll do that um, for you guys because it just it wouldn't be interesting to watch. This guy, however, I will do this variant of the stealth ship. And this one's actually kind of interesting. We have a beam weapon, a laser, lots of lots of dodge. And dodging is great. And now, you heard me say earlier how it has no shields, and it really doesn't have shields. What it has instead is cloaking. And um, cloaking is, uh, we didn't get to show you on the last, the, the Federation flagship, because uh, that one was not capable of having uh, cloak installed. Uh, but we also have two points in sensors, and we also have something called titanium system casing, which basically, if they hit me in a subsystem, that subsystem has a 15% chance not to take damage. However, uh, my hull still gets damaged, okay? And uh, we also have long-range sensors, which I'll show you uh, what that does in a moment. So I'm going to call this the uh, Cloak Engaged. I didn't put USS because it actually I don't think it would fit. Let's, let's have a look. Yeah, you see what I mean? We'll just do like this. How's that? USS Cloak Engaged. Someone wanted me to do HMCS because that's the Canadian version of it, and I'm like, uh, I can't really do that. So, uh, with us today, we'll have Wikidoo. Uh, dri dr he'll be driving the ship. Uh, then there'll be me, Mike Latt, obviously on weapons. I'm just going to be the guy on weapons all the time. And then the last guy will be uh, Jack Witchell, so I'll just call him Witchell. And he's going to be my repairing bitch, because he's a human with no exceptional traits whatsoever. That describes, that describes Jack really well. I I'm kidding, Jack. I I'm also, I know I'm mean to Jack, but... If you knew him, you you know why. So first thing I'm gonna do is unpower my med bay, power up my engines, and this is probably one of the ideal setup you want here. I'm also gonna switch dual lasers into the first slot. I don't know if I showcased that me doing this, and it's actually pretty useful because remember if the weapon if the weapons bay gets hit, uh, everything disables from from right to left. So the mini beam, uh, unfortunately, uh, it requires. The shields to be down for it to do any damage, uh, but it's very—it just requires one power, and it does like one damage per room. And, and it's a very short beam, but it's actually really nice. I haven't shown you guys beams yet, but I'll, I will show you. The other thing interesting to note about beams is um, it has a 100% chance to do damage. Uh, like there's no missing with the beam. Uh, the la the lasers, however, can miss, but I get two shots, and so it's two shots to lower the shields and then beam them. That's how essentially this works. You start with an all a boring all human crew here, and as I said, you do have uh, uh, two points in sensors. Not sure that's not exactly the most useful thing, to be honest. Uh, but it is a ship that's mainly about sensors, so I guess that, that would be why. Honestly, uh, two points in sensors is not the first thing I would put stuff into, but whatever. Uh, so let's 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 get uh, let's head out. So this is exactly actually what this is a great example of exactly what the um, the long range sensors do. Over here, with the orange, it shows me that there's an asteroid field here. So I basically get, before jumping into an area, I actually know what's going to be there. So there's absolutely no fucking excuse for me to go into any orange areas whatsoever. The yellow areas means that there's going to be a ship there. 
Uh, so if you're playing in such a way that you want to actually avoid all the ships, you are more than free to do that. Uh, stores obviously and distress signals can be detected either way. So I'm actually going to the ship and the reason why is because I actually play this Destroyer of Worlds <laughs> stealth cruiser. Um, he goes, haha, I knew someone would fall into our dastardly trap and it was a dis distress beacon was nothing but a decoy for a pirate. What a bitch. Now, uh, I'm just pausing here to show you, um, this guy's an asshole. Uh, he's gonna completely, re he's gonna keep repeatedly attacking my ship. I have to evade it. There is no shields to, to absorb any of this. I can, however, I can cloak. Uh, if I if I choose to so I'm gonna do that so he misses on purpose now by the way look look at my evade It's uh, 90% and how it's calculated is it's whatever my, my base evade is which is 30% at the moment because I have four blocks in this and two people on it and that's um I'm sure that adds up to it somehow uh, This is like 20 on it. So yeah, each block is worth five and someone manning pilot and engines are worth both uh, they're, they're both worth five each so it's 30% then you add 60% and there you go. So I'm gonna wait for my weapons to charge. One thing to note here that it, his weapons are not charging while my I'm in cloak, which is actually a really nice element to this. Now I have to hope to fuck that he's not gonna hit me uh, where my where my weapons are. So he fortunately did not. So I'm actually gonna hit him in his weapons bay. Do I wanna do that? Yes, I think I do. Uh, okay, and just watch. So I'm gonna wait. Oh, one missed and one hit. Okay, so now I have the beam weapon, and so now I'm going to hit it like this. Now, it's a very short beam weapon, and you basically uh, arrange it in such a way that you'll do the maximum damage to subsystems that you want to hit. And so usually uh, I want to hit weapons, drones if he, if he is actually using drones, and then shields in that order. So this is actually going to, as long as each, uh, as long as it's one pixel in a room, it will do full damage. Uh, like, having it in a room like this will not do anything but one damage to that room. So when I put it like on the very edge here, which is very hard to line up, it will hit the weapons, this room, then shields, and then that room. So here we go. There you go. And I, I even started fire. So now his drone is offline, thank God. But he's unfortunately going to have that and he hit my doors. What an asshole. So I'm going to wait until this charges up. So I can, just before it, it finishes charging, since they have a fire delay, I can do that. And it's it's a lot of pausing and just lining up shots for yourself. And there you go, he's dead. So now I need to go repair everything. Unfortunately, I don't have like extra crew members just to kind of spare. Like if I'm gonna bring anybody off, it's probably gonna be the person off engines, uh, which may surprise you, but I feel a good offense is also a good defense. That's kind of my, my mentality. Um, it will be nice when I get just another crew member because I actually I really don't want to actually take this guy off evade because it is my only defensive option um, But yeah, so here we have another possible ship uh, Might as well go kill him So you can take the safe route if you really want I, I don't really want to do that because every single time you get like people like this now this is a problem because he actually has a beam weapon and This is the problem with beam weapons is you have no chance to evade that you can't evade it the only, the only, the only thing, the only damage prevention, you, uh, the, the only damage reduction you can do is preventative, essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for I cloaked basically to prevent it from charging up for a couple seconds, and now I'm going to hit it, and I'm going to hit him in the cockpit, uh, the shields, and then his weapons. So there you go. I just took down his weapon systems. So that's it. That's what you want to be doing is you want to be aiming for his weapon systems. Shields kind of nice to take down. Um, but it's not necessary. Now, I don't know really why I hit him there again, but whatever. I have to make sure it stays down. I might as well just hit him again. This, this last hit is going to do it. And that's it. He was a slaver ship. He didn't offer me anything. What a, what a jerk. I hate him. Okay, well, anyways. Um, let's jump to... Ooh, there's another, another ship we didn't see here. So, you know, you might as well just battle everybody. I mean, they, they drop scrap from you. Now, this is actually going to be a problem right here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to regret this decision. He wanted a toll, and so I said no. Because unfortunately, I'm not going to pay pay this fucking asshole. <laughs> but, um... Because I, I honestly, I think I, I could dodge a shot, but he does have a Zoltan shield, and this is actually one of the worst things for me, because, uh... It basically prevents me from doing what I need to. So, I'm, over here, I'm gonna actually going to be doing this. 
And this will actually do four damage to Zoltan's shield. Unfortunately, I still didn't get through completely, but that's okay. And you notice how the uh, cloaking does get four units of ion damage. That's about a, I think about a 20 second cooldown or something. Now these things I can't, I can't dodge. Um, I'm lucky that I, I dodged that. Oh, there we go. And we're gonna hit him like this. Where's that missile? Oh, it's near my cloak. Oh, hey. My subsystem did not get damaged. Lucky me. Uh, I did take hull damage though, so that means I can still use my cloak again. I'm hoping that I can cloak just in time. Nope. Okay, apparently not. That's okay. So I'll just do this. So it's a whole lot of like pausing and, and lining up shots and things like that. That's what the ship is mainly about. And he left some crap behind. Honestly, this augmentation, the titanium casing, is not one of the more useful ones, I, I would go as far as, as to say. I am not a huge fan of it. Um, it's it's nice to have for the beginning, but yeah. So, there's a str distress speaking on the... F and there's a sensor picking up, there's a single life form. Let's go down. Uh, there's a madman, and his mental question, his state is questionable. He might kill us. That's why he's a madman, so I'm gonna leave him there. If I had a slug crew member, I could basically, uh, assess his mental state, and then I would know if he would kill me or not. Uh, cause slugs are telepathic, but that's not gonna happen. Um, now, there is a... There is a... Asteroid field here, so I'm actually gonna go, go down here, cause I can still jump there, fortunately enough for me. Hopefully there's no, uh... Uh bad place in that area. So there's a there's a traitor here, apparently. I don't really know. This would have been a good deal if I had more missiles, but I can't do it, so. Alright, well, unfortunately, um, I don't have a choice. I have to go into the Iron Storm, but it looks like there's no ship there. It would tell me if there was a ship there, so. Uh, so there's, uh, there's an automated Rebel Scout, so I'm gonna cloak to try and escape. Uh, I easily lose my Pursuer in the Storm, yeah. Because, you know, there's no... <laughs> there's no, there's absolutely no question. Uh, like, the cloaking is, is fucking fantastic. I love it. Now, here's the problem. I don't actually want to go in nebulas that much. Uh, so there's an automated ship stationed near a small rebel station. It's impossible to tell what's inside. So I can already kind of tell there's a laser here and a missile weapon, so I'm just gonna attack him. Fuck him. You can use a cloak if you really cho choose to, but I'm not gonna do that. Now, I can't see what's inside the ship because I do not have senses anymore. Like, complete, nebulas completely get rid of your sensors. It kind of sucks, but... So I'm gonna evade. Sometimes, even with that 90%, he will hit. It Like, 90% isn't invincibility. Okay, let me go. Hit him with beam. There you go. I might as well just hit him, uh, hit him up again. Hopefully his missile weapon will not fire. Yeah! yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I salvage what I can. Ooh, and uh, apparently it was designed to outfit Ribble ships with drone systems, and I find a defense drone Mark II. Uh, that's gonna sell for a nice price. Um, I don't want to keep anything like that, unfortunately. Um, and now I'm actually surrounded by fucking uh, ships, so I'm gonna just kill them all. Why not? Who cares? Uh, honestly, I, I rarely I rarely take damage, so he's gonna try an FTL away from me. Uh, okay. He's only got one laser, so I'm not actually overly concerned about his uh, uh, firepower. Uh, so I can just negate it, but just by, uh, once again, wait for him to fire. Alright, and target his engines. Because we don't want him to jump away and give away our dastardly plans. So now, now his FTL charging is delayed, which is nice. And I'm gonna target it again. Fortunately for him, he only has one weapon. Like this, this is the poorly, poor outfitted uh, rebel. He won't even get like through one block of shields. Okay. Anyways, his his ship breaks apart, and I'm relieved to know I'm still one one step ahead of the fleet. And I got a bunch of resources. Um, so as you, as you can see, I'm playing like it. I actually should probably use some of this scrap that just occurred to me. So we have an advanced scout. Ah, uh, fuck. He's got a cloak too. I I hate dealing with other ships with cloak. All right, come on, please. There we go. There you are. He ha I basically suffer the same problems he does. I I really actually I can do this. There we go. 
So I can still hit three rooms, which is kind of nice. Okay, this one, I unfortunately am going to have to try and evade it on my own. And holy god, thank, thank you. <laughs> I evaded. Alright. Fortunately, he gets to... I'm going to do this just in case he targets that area. Whoops. Uh, no, no. Do this. Okay, I was just being very cautious, because if, if he hit that, then my mini beam wouldn't work anymore. Okay, I'm going to actually go and uh, invest into another level of cloak. Now, this is actually all I need, and I'll explain to you why. If you are doing the ship, you don't need to get more cloak for the time being. You may want to later on, but that's it. Um, and unfortunately, that's actually all I really need immediately. So um, what you can actually do is you can go get some more evade. Because evade is actually quite nice. And I usually I usually draw power from from uh, oxygen to, to engines because I'm a, I'm a micromanaging core like that. You know how I work. Okay, so there's a Mantis ship, uh, and they they weren't expect. So they were returning home with with its hulk. So they're basically a, a raider, and so they determined in fact that they don't, don't have to wait to see if you're hostile before firing. So he's gonna try and board my ship. I'm gonna cloak. He can't board my ship while I do this. Fortunately, when I uncloak, he can board my ship. Uh, hopefully by then, though, I'll have taken out his weapon systems, and I won't be completely fucked. So. Unfortunately, that doesn't really work. Uh, so, the, my best option here is actually to go like starting from his cockpit down to the teleporter room. Luckily, only one person boarded, so I'm just gonna let him attack while I put. Actually, no, he can come too. I do have a three uh, three person med bay, which is kind of nice. Okay, you can go kill each other. Oh, here we go. Uh, I guess I might as well attack his shields. And I guess I'll just go through like this. Yeah, he's dead. And that's it. 18. And might as well go heal both both me and Witchell. Me and Jack are bros for life. Not really. I hate I hate Jack. Don't tell Jack though. He's probably not even watching this actually. Don't tell Jack I said that. Fucking asshole. <laughs> okay. Um. So, ah, there we go. We're we're pretty we're pretty solid on that. Okay, so now we're going to jump into a... Ooh, I can actually go get this Distress Beacon. So let's go do that. I might as well. Uh, so I'm going to dock and try and rescue people, because there's a chance I could go and... Uh, well, this one has a chance to lose someone, but this has a chance to gain someone. Unfortunately, the last of the survivors were, were gone, so that didn't work. Oh well. Well, we tried. It was a space station on fire. Fire is like the deadliest thing in this game, it seems. Well, not really, but... Okay, so a master ship hails me through the storm. These are sacred... Erdvaneg hunting grounds. You are prey. Shields up. So, uh, he's gonna go try and uh, board me, and I'm going to go and cloak, because that's how I roll. As you, as you saw, I disarmed him rather easily uh, the last time I... Uh... You're more than welcome to try and board me. There you go, he has no weapons. And he is currently in my- he's currently attacking my cloaking bay, so... It's just one guy. It's always just one guy. Alright. Oops, I, I just do this, because I'm lazy. Alright, come help him. No, get, get out of there. Now I'm gonna have him come into the room so Witchill can actually come over here and shoot him too. So he won't attack. He won't attack Witchill while I'm I'm in front of his face. Alright. Actually, I like I don't like diverting power from cloak ever. I love my cloak. Just cloaking like a boss. For like for no reason. So um oh by the way I don't think I gave this uh, explanation. So if you've noticed I've been actually cloaking the second I get out of um actually this is the second time it's happened. It's not because I can. Uh, board me, but more because my weapon's fully charged by the time that cloak is done. Uh, like, by the time it's my cloak is off, which is really nice. So, if they have a beam weapon, it no longer is any threat to me. Now, unfortunately, if I go here, I may have to uh, engage the rebel ship later. Oh, fuck it, let's just do it. You only live once. Uh, did I just, did I really just say that? 
All right. So it's an automated ship attacking a, an outpost, and we're going to go and try and kill him. Uh, now, I, I do have the option here to basically uh, evade his fire. I, I guess I might as well, because it is a waste of a shot for him. So, that's what I'm going to do. All right, let's get... Now this, now, this one's the big problem for me, because I actually have to do this stupid fucking shit. Like, I can't actually hit three rooms. It's not possible. But I can take out his weapons in one hit, fortunately for me. I just think it's kind of like... Just, I hate attacking automated drones because, for this reason. So I don't, I'm not diverting power from oxygen to evasion. I sh actually probably should do that when I'm cloaking. It just occurred to me I only have 90% cloak. Although, also, I, I could just... I could not do that, because I just realized that... Whoops. I'm not paying attention, sorry. Um, I just realized I have 57 scrap that I've been using, so I I can just get another power power bar. But we gotta micromanage and and hit with the the mini beam a whole lot. So he got destroyed, and he goes, "Thanks, we've been we getting butt harassed by those scouts. Take this on the house." And so that's it. So yeah, he is going to be in the 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 radius. So I might as well go finish up here, attack another ship. This is another automated drone, only one bar of shields, and that looks to me like a laser of some sort, so we're going to attack him. Yeah, laser and laser, so once again, same deal, and I didn't even, I didn't get the one power bar like I said I would last time. Mark a lot over here. Alright, so he's attacked, he's using both his weapons. He missed. I'm going to attack him. Now, by the way, I didn't actually explain this, but whenever you attack, you'll notice how my cloak actually depletes faster. There is an augmentation to actually remove this... Uh, downside to attacking. Um, I don't really see a point in waiting because my weapons are fully charged. And I take out his weapons anyways with that, like, those two hits, so... It's not like I really care. I, I just kind of like screwing up his first shot. Um, the other thing I also want to mention, though, is that you know how people get levels up for evasions, like Wikidoo doesn't only has two levels but you're, you're thinking to yourself well Mike you've you've evaded a lot more than that and I'm like uh, I you're right I have however uh, it doesn't actually back so I salvage what I can and I get this is storage fight for various resources I salvage everything possible all right I actually whenever you cloak if you if you get an evade by cloaking it doesn't actually count towards your evasion leveling up so it's it's not a big deal though, because later on when I get shields, I won't be as 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 um, likely to to cloak myself. So oh, I just noticed I had this. I don't know if I didn't sell it before, but I have a ton of resources. So um, I have 86. So I might as well continue to save though. There's a store here. Might as well go there. Um, okay, so uh, greetings, traveler. We're we're crippled by a band of pirates and are forced to sell our remaining valuable equipment and acquire supplies to get home. All right. Um, they are actually not selling me shields here. <laughs> um, not like I'd be able to afford it anyways. Well, maybe I could if I... Well, not really. No. But shields are not the most important thing. A crew member would be nice, but I'm I'm going to hold out to make sure... To see if I'll get enough. They are not the most valuable thing to me right now. In fact, none of this is really valuable to me at the moment, um, so I'm just going to buy a couple. I'm going to leave a couple because in case there's some sort of event that allows me to heal up. Um, it's, I don't think it's that important to get all the way up. I, there's really... I don't want anything here. That's it. Let's go exit. So, I unfortunately... Yeah, here we have a guy with uh, two shield bars, so... And a beam weapon. Um, having level 3 cloak may have helped, but uh, we'll... we'll We'll get everything charged up really fast. Uh, yeah, that's the worst he's going to do, you see? Guaranteed hit. Now, to do damage to him here... Actually, I'm going to just wait until the cloak finishes, because I, I don't even want to fight him. I would have to hit both lasers and then start beaming him, and I, I have no interest in doing this, really. I want to do it as little as possible. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And I took away one of his bars of shields. But there's actually, like, one thing of... Shields. Uh, one thing of uh, fuel is not enough to make me want to stay here. Um, so here we go. Uh, basically, what you want to be doing as a stealth ship is you want to be avoiding nebulas because it does actually remove your sensors. Uh, not the not the sensor buff like the augmentation I have, but the sensors I have down here. Um, even though you want to go in nebulas when it's not a nebula sector uh, to basically slow down the advance of the the rebel fleet. Um, 
you, you do want to be very careful about which system you choose. If you choose a rebel system, there'll be a lot of rebel ships, obviously. If you choose a mantis system, there'll be a lot of boarding ships. Okay. Um, you also want to be careful because it nebulas, you got to look at what, what's ahead. So I'm probably going to be going to this green one uh, when I get the opportunity. So I'm actually going to go rebel because I'm not too keen on getting boarded constantly. Uh, and so there's a... Uh, Rebels came down hard on locals here between tax collectors and military bases. Rebel presence in the sector is high. That's good for me. I like killing ships. That's what I'm going to be doing here. Um, to basically save up scrap for, for, the next, uh, for the next time we'll see. Uh, but uh, just to explain, Zoltans are probably one of the worst one systems you don't want to go into because then they have Zoltan shields, which we all know how terrible those are. And also, um, and if you go into rock systems, they'll usually have missiles which you can evade. That's, that's sort of nice to know. Uh, but, and also, the, uh, what are they called? Uh, the NGs. NGs tend to have drones, and drones are the ones that are constantly going around on my ship and firing. So that's another one I don't want to go into. So you just avoid those two and you should be fine. But anyways, uh, so that's it for, uh, part one of episode two. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.